today we'll be looking at the new eyes pack that I've just finished. It consists of uh, 28 uh, different eyes and uh, two variations of each. A would be the with a rough uh, eyeball in the socket. B version would be without it. The reason for this is uh, for look development, basically, so you can quickly go through, you know, if you're concepting or idea generating, go through go through the A version to see quickly what uh, it would look like with an eye sphere, the cornea and the iris and so on inside, if it has an iris. And once you're happy with it, with a choice, there's a crab. I quite like this one. Um, you can commit to say, let's say a. I like this one. Right, so let's commit to that and I go to the B version. Now that I have the B version, I can insert a proper eyeball. With the 28 VDMs comes 15 uh, different eyeballs as well as an insert mesh. Or uh, 14 plus 1, the plus 1 being the sclera cornea hybrid. Very plain. You simply insert them where, wherever the hell you like. And I'm going to undo that because one tip when you're inserting eyeballs is um, turn off symmetry, pressing X. And let's say I want to choose this eyeball. And they're fairly high detail. They're not insane, but enough to get the job done. So I'm only inserting it on one side for now. I will mirror it late, uh, later on. The reason being now, if I'm in move mode, I can just swap between the different eyeballs and see what they look like. If it was in mirror mode, it tends to sometimes screw up a bit. And this is pretty neat. Pretty neat, as they say. An uh, even better thing to do, you can see this mesh is masked out because I inserted the, the eye onto the the head bit. It's not necessarily the best idea, um, especially if you have subdivision levels on the head, you wouldn't have been able to do this. So let me just undo that. I like to append uh, just a sphere. Alt and click on that and just hide it somewhere doesn't matter where just you'll be um, adding your eyes to this sub tool that's the only reason I'm doing this and you won't get that masking effect I mean you can hide masks but it's this is a better way of doing it anyway so now I'm inserting eyeballs onto that sphere that's hidden inside the head so if you have subdivision levels, it's not a problem, you know. You can just do it this way. And now when you swap between eyeballs, this head bed is not masked out, which can be undesirable. So let's frame him nicely. If I press tab, it hides a lot of the UI. I just like it this way. Cat eye. I think that's a, some kind of monkey, sort of. Okay, let's move on. Let's try out some more of the uh, BDMs. I'm just going to hide that guy. So we've got 28. This guy. the reptile without the socket again. Uh, some of them are fairly random names because they're not, most are not really based on, they're not meant to be realistic, although some are based on like an elephant or a, a parrot or what have you. But this is such a great way to very quickly again, let me turn back symmetry back on, to come up with just 
Because if you had to sculpt this guy here and there, it would take forever. Now you can very quickly try out a whole lot of ideas. And you don't have to use these eyeballs as or sockets as sockets. You can use them as other stuff, which I'll get into later. Let's carry on. Um, that's the same one. This one's very similar. This is a very simple spider eye. I initially made it three in a row, but that's less control. Just one, you've got more control of how you place these guys. Crab, let me take it socketless. It's one of my favorites. I really like what that does to creatures. This frog can look silly very easily, but on the right creature, it could work. This hollow version you could even use as a socket for horns somewhere else, or something weird if you want. I think this is based on a bird of some kind. This is based on an elephant. Whoops, I don't want to go that far. This one's really simple, but it's one of my favorites. And this is quite. It stands out to me. Another weird one. This one is based on a chameleon. I mean, it looks nothing like one now, but I'm sure you could extrapolate from this what it used to look like when it was on a chameleon because that's what I, where I took it from I cut it right out lurk put it sideways looks a bit more well, it looks sad now warp slug so these two look different but I Count them as one set, so one of the 28, because I think it would have been cheeky of me to uh, count these as two when they're actually just one, but slightly different. Now this guy does not have an eyeball version because it stretches the polys too far and makes it's a very long boring reason, which if anyone wants to know they can message me on ArtStation, I'll explain why. But, you don't need it. I mean, I've never actually inserted an eyeball into this guy. <laughs> See, I think if I swap now... No, it's fine this time. See, I, I am having symmetry on now, so maybe I just had a glitch earlier. Weird. But I like it. Just undoing that. Uh, Bulger. And the socketless version, again, would be useful to use the sockets for something else. It doesn't have to be eyes, right? This one is similar to that one, but not the same. As you can see. quite like this uh, skur. Uh, and there's two humanoid, they're not perfectly human, they're humanoid I guess. If you drag these out onto a realistic human face they look alright. But my intention, my focus is definitely not humans. Because I don't find it that interesting. Uh, quite like this one. Slightly stylized, but not quite. Scorched, don't ask, it just is very deeply inset. Um, I think this one is similar, yeah. Very deeply inset and stony, rocky uh, texture. And the last one is another reptilian-esque. 
frowny guy. I loaded up some models earlier, some work in progress, random stuff. Let me just quickly show what these look like and other stuff. Again, I quite like this one, but it's really small. There's one called Scowler, which is fairly simple. Or Scowl, is another one of my favourites. Well, I really like how it locks into with this guy. Or he can have eye, eye shoulders, or eye holders, or shies. Ah, oh, didn't show this reptilian one. Oops, loading the wrong one. Let's move on to the silly beast. So really quickly you can just come up with stuff. I love using these VDMs. I've only recently started making them and even using them. Whereas prior I, I just didn't bother, but they're so powerful in the sense that they save you so much time that it's mad not to use them. And you can always, if you don't quite like the, any of the eyes on the creature, you can always, it'll always still be faster to use it as a starting point and um, sculpt it to your needs. Uh, yeah, what do we have here? All these chores, by the way, um, are from the Creature Feature Volume 1. Uh, random four random jewels from that uh, pack, which is also one of my favorite ways to design creatures. Right, let's get into this one. This should be interesting. Do a quick render. Hmm. I like it mildly, but not enough. So let me try something else. Yes, I like that. I'm thinking the Goonies there. Alright. So this is this pack. Actually, let me... Uh, do this. Append a sphere. Switch to the sphere. So we can draw our actual uh, eyeballs into that. Whoops. You don't have to actually draw on the sphere as long as it's drawing onto something, right? And the good thing is the um, gizmo should always be in the center of the uh, eyeball you draw out. Again, you can quickly go through these guys. I like that. Or again, just have blank, demonic, white eye thing. That is a... I forgot what that was. All of them were sculpted from Google Photos. Uh, just finally, uh, up close. They're about 100k each. So it's not insane. At all. And there we go. That is the uh, VDM eyes pack and the insert mesh brush pack. Uh, let me show you a tip that I learned from uh, Flip Normals regarding making these uh, insert meshes. Um, let me add a complain solo that. So you just, if you want to make your own VDM, you uh, 
to make a plane. Ignore the ZBrush documentation completely. Ignore it. Ignore it because you will get errors and you will cry after sculpting something lovely and then sometimes it's almost unfixable because you... I'll show you why. If... I'm going to be using a mouse now. Generally I make a plane, I divide it four times. I don't really want to go too high because they make the brush size, file size fairly large, much bigger than the Z tool file. I don't know why, but they increase about two or three times in size than the Z tool file. And then go down a bit. So we sculpt our thing. There we go, blah blah blah. And let's say we've sorted something really amazing, not what I've done here. God, this is terrible. <laughs> And um, you've, we've accidentally sculpted on the border. So what happens now is, generally you take the... If you want to make your insert mesh, take the chisel brush, load that up. Turn perspective off. Shift and right click and drag to snap the orientation you want. Like this, very important. Then when you with this chisel brush selected, say clone. Otherwise, you override it. Not permanently, but during the session. And now go to create. Create multi alpha brush. And what this does is it, it creates a. Um, oh, it creates an, uh, an alpha brush from each subtool. And I've got stuff here that can't be multi-alpha brushes, you'll see a 3D icon appear there if it worked correctly, and it didn't because these four subtools are not uh, square planes, so let me delete them. Let's try that again. Okay, brush, multi-alpha brush. There we go, 3D. And whatever you've named it there, it'll be the name there. You can always change that later. So, let us append a... No, it's best to work somewhere else. See these artifacts. Especially that. That happened because of this border. Now, you can fix that by uh, going to deformation. Oops, not doing that. Now these two are meant for VDM creation. Now this guy, Relax Playing Grid. In the documentation, they state, you know, if, you, if your poly starts stretching too much, if you start doing this and then you go Relax Playing Grid and it smooths it all out, it works beautifully for that, but it screws up your VDM brush almost permanently. There are ways to fix it, but it's extremely long-winded and just not worth it. And sometimes almost unfixable. Um, so do not ever touch this slider. Just stay away from it. Ignore the documentation. It is cursed. It is so cursed it will explode your face. Just don't touch it. This guy is alright. It takes the grid back to square one, which is fine to use. Now how do we fix that? Well, let me just... I'm holding down control, mask rectangle, control, I mask this off. It's all about holding down control, left clicking, to soften my mask. And now I'm going to morph whatever is there to the grid, see? So that should not give us any artifacts, but that will. So I'm just shift, smoothing it out. Let me load that. Again, so just create multi alpha brush and see what it did. It should be artifact free. Uh, the best way to tell is to just work on a sphere. Yeah, no artifacts. I mean, there's a little bump there, but that's not an artifact, it's just in my mesh. I will show you what happens. Let's say, whoops, relax playing grid. 
Oh, that's too extreme. Uh, let me do that by accident. To in order to relax these polys. That happens. Let's smooth this off again. Morph to grid. Now it should be screwed. There we go, it's screwed forever. This is one's actually quite mild. When we did the relax to plane grid, it did something unholy to the polys at the borders, and it's very hard to fix that. Um, you can smooth all you like, you can redraw it. It's just sometimes you get lucky and you can fix it. Like if I morph this guy back to grid and draw this guy back onto this, we don't see any artifacts, right? And save this as the new because it looks perfect. Let's go to our test sphere. We still have those artifacts. They just, even though we morph to grid and, we, and it looks like it's fine here. I mean, could smooth these out. That's likely where it's giving you problems. Let's try that again. Go to our test sphere. So it's slightly resolved, but it's still there and if you do this over and over for a ten or a million times, you can get rid of it. You're smoothing and smoothing, redrawing, smoothing. Bear in mind we're working at low res. If we were at higher res, that getting rid of that is just impossible. Not impossible, but just stay away from this slider. So the best way, and this is what I learned from Flip Normals, to make a VDM. Is, let me rid of this is just a plain don't load the project file they recommend just load a plain sphere divide it four times that roundness is perfectly fine I'm not doing it five times because if a million is a bit high like I said your file size will become very big and here's the, one of the important bits store a morph target as soon as you've done this so now you can go Crazy, blah blah blah. If you, whoops, if you make a mistake and you see there's errors, you can simply go to your morph brush and morph back properly to the grid. And this is generally the cleanest way of making these guys. So stay away from the edges and stay away from uh, relax the playing grid. Oh, it was. Making this pack early on was, I didn't know that, so half the eyes were cursed and it was a nightmare to fix. But I had to fix some of them because I really liked them and I didn't want to re-sculpt them. Which I think would have been slightly worse in some cases. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching and have an excellent day.